I normally used to uh, stage all these patients. You know, I remember, uh, you, I think you're much younger, so at the old times, you used to do uh, anterior releases for any curve above 70, so it was uh, a staged anterior release a week later or so, come back and do the posterior surgery. But since we started giving away, the, um, not doing anterior releases, I have been doing this all at one stage. I very, very rarely stage it. Um, and um, so far, I haven't been pushed to stop the surgery uh, and come back because of excessive bleeding un unaccounted. I haven't passed through this experience. I, I acknowledge and I know that some have reported this and some of our colleagues were saying that, but so far I haven't run into this. So actually, I prefer to actually go on and get the surgery done one stage. Obviously, with such uh, difficult cases, uh, we get this case, it will be the whole day, and we just uh, focus on doing it, starting from the morning, finishing, late in the afternoon, early evening. Would you like to ask a question about uh, uh, congenital kyphoscoliosis? scoliosis? When you, you perform at the kyphoscoliosis, scoliosis, so in uh, walking patients. So do you use the monitoring or, and about the, the vascularization, you, do you uh, agree uh, all the time only in the SSPs or do you f make any uh, walking, uh, awake test for this kind of patients and about the vascularization you check and, and during the surgery? Yes. Exactly, or the legs, if you look to about the pulses in the legs to see if the corrections are so high and do you have any vascular problems. So. Well, yeah, well, I mean, f let's, p let's put the, the vascular p part aside. Um, the vascular thing, um, we don't really open wedges at the front, we close wedges, so it's actually shortening, so we haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen vascular problems at that. I, I have seen with uh, Smith-Peterson osteotomy, um, a patient who actually died of a ruptured aorta two hours after the surgery. It was my first case as a resident in 1991. And that's how terrifying it was. Um, and a very, very competent uh, professor at the time was doing this surgery. And we, 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 at that time, there was no instrumentation. We could keep them in bed for three months after doing an SPO. And uh, the patient, two hours suddenly arrested and uh, on post-mortem we found that this was a, fr um, a, a fractured aorta, it was a calcified aorta and it's a contraindication of doing an SPO. So all the corrections that you have seen are, are closing wedges and when it comes to kyphosis, so there is no vascular risk there. Um, for, for, for neurological risks, we, uh, for the last six, six years I haven't been doing any deformity surgery without neuromonitoring. Um, uh, and uh, we do this, the, the standard things, somatosensory and motor evoked, and the free running EMGs. Um, and um, if there is any doubt, we take the normal precautions, raise the blood pressure, check the, blood, the temperature of the patient, give steroids, um, recheck and recheck and ch ch check the canal. And, uh, and uh, if there is any doubt about the, the waves, we get a wake up test, interrupt, we stop the procedure, get a wake up test, and then come back if, if things are, all, are okay. A lot of praying, of course. It's <laughs> important. Uh, what about uh, using mu multiple rods? You see, you you perform many three-column osteotomies, and many of them only with two rods. Do you have many rods that broke um, one year or two years later? I agree. Um, well, first. Um, I think the, I, I just told you about the 19-year-old with this uh, rotated kyphoscoliosis that had a fractured rod, um, actually, and came back with a neurology. Um, and this was a patient that had a neurological deficit at the primary operation, so that was very hard, uh, painful, okay? But I have to tell you that uh, my cohort of patients are different than yours. I'm very lucky because I, I deal with difficult cases, yes, but they're young. So the incidence of pseudoarthrosis is much less. The incidence of healing and fusion is much higher. Having said that, um, I, remember the, the, my tea leaf presentation, there was a case that I used four rod technique because this massive woman who had a, 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 a fractured rod. So I'm becoming more and more aware of the, the need for, for more rods. But honestly, in pediatric patients, I haven't seen it that much.